Good morning, my friends. It's Wednesday, April 14th, and I'm here with you at the Rising of the Sun, Kate. My cat is asking to go out. You want to go out? Okay, let's go outside. All right. We finished our breakfast. We're going out. All right. I have with me this beautiful icon that's helping me pray in Easter. We're reading the first epistle of John. And today, John talks to us about wanting. Human beings are prone to want stuff. <laughs> no kidding, huh? When I first moved into my other house, I didn't have cable. And for a while, I didn't watch any advertisements when I was watching movies or whatever. It was kind of cool. Well, I got cable back and boy, renewed appreciation for how much they play on our desires and make you think that you will just feel so great if you eat a hamburger. <laughs> We're prone to want things for ourselves. It's just part of human nature. We want this and we want that and we want so much. And, and in the Garden of Eden, that's what they wanted. They wanted the one thing that wasn't offered them, the forbidden fruit. So there's this deep truth about us just wanting stuff, you know, and and we tend to take too much. We eat too much. We buy too much. <laughs> John is saying that if we're going to find God, we've got to curb our desire. You can't let it lead you along as if it's uh, dragging you around, your desire. It's okay to say no. No, I don't have to have that second bowl of ice cream. No, I don't need to buy another piece of furniture. No, I have so many clothes that I can't fit them in my closet. No, I don't need that. Well, for me, it's Starbucks. I'll be driving by and go, oh yeah. <laughs> when I just had a cup of coffee at home. Some nourishment, some celebration is great, but you'll know if your desires are running out of control. And it may not just be for stuff or food. It could be for people. You could have a amorous relationship that runs out of control or a desire to be pleased or to be pleasing to other people, to be liked. All of these needs and wants and desires drive us off course and we forget about what it is that God is asking of us. We don't want to run around our lives like a mouse in a maze, chasing after things that don't matter. We want to serve the one who can see clearly and knows where we're supposed to go. The one who has the perspective of eternal life. We want to follow that one. And we don't want to be dragged down by all of our stuff, all of our inclinations and desires and wants and attractions. Take note of them for sure. And you don't have to starve yourself. But we don't want to be driven by our desires. The advertisements, they are not true. They speak a half truth. That first bite of hamburger might be good. <laughs> the shampoo does smell good, but they're not going to fill you. You're actually desiring something much more profound than these products and performances. You're desiring the pure love of God. So curb those wants, curb those desires so that you can practice desiring the one who truly will fill you the risen Christ. Let us pray. Almighty God, you bring us in safety to this new day in a country full of consumer opportunities. Help us to curb our attractions and desires and to manage them, to know that they don't have the last word 
that we can cultivate a desire for you and for peace, for service, for love. Work in us the good purpose of your will, O oh Lord, and guide us to serve you and to follow you above all else. Help us not to become slaves of our own desires. Lord, we ask you to bless those who are ill today, those who are dying, those who are caring for them, especially George. Lord, bless this country, bless this world. Help us to move through this pandemic and into a new chapter of human existence with greater reverence for this incredible planet and all of its resources. This we ask in the name of Jesus, your son, who is the fulfillment of all our desires. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.